Hey guys, I wanted to uh, bring you a video this morning. I'm finishing up a laminate floor project here um, at this house. I got most, most of the big spaces done, but dealing with a couple transition areas that um, I think a lot of people struggle with. And before I kind of, you know, knew some of the kind of the tricks of the trade, I struggled with these areas too. So I thought I'd shoot a video and uh, give you guys a couple pointers to make life a little bit easier. So what I'm working on here is um, coming into the bathroom and I've got to go underneath the um, the door jam here and there's been I don't know how many times I've been in houses and I've seen situations where um, people have made you know just a horrendous cut around the door jam and then it's just filled full of caulk basically to to fill that up and um, it doesn't need to be that way it's actually not that difficult so I thought I'd kind of show you um, a couple tips here so the first thing that you want to do um, First thing you want to do is cut off your, your door jams and uh, I'll move the camera here so you can see this a little bit better in a second. But what I like to use is I use an oscillating cutter. Um, if you haven't seen one of these before, I'll turn it on, it's going to be noisy. But basically, it just vibrates at a high, at a high speed and take a piece of your flooring material that you're using, um, lay it down right up against your door jam. And then just take that oscillating cutter and cut right through your door jam. And the goal here, what you want to do, um, is you want to cut, you want to not cut your base, leave that because your base will have quarter round up to it, which will cover the gap. But you want to start your cut here on your door casing. So you want to remove your door casing, you want to actually remove the door jam, and then you want to remove the casing to the inside as well. And when you do that, you end up with this gap here that a piece of flooring material can perfectly fit under. You have a nice gap, you won't need to caulk, and uh, it'll be a nice finished look. So, um, a couple things that you need to do. First of all, uh, this is this is snap lock floor like most, uh, most floors are. This is a laminate, um, no different than vinyl products, but um, you want to make sure you have some wood glue. Um, that's important in this particular application. Um, and then the other thing that you want to have, this isn't necessary, but a little little three inch block plane, it's like five bucks at a home improvement store. Um, you can actually do this with a utility knife too, but this makes things uh, real easy for what I'm going to show you. So I've already cut, I've got two pieces here that are going to go in this, in this door jam. Um, it's kind of, I, I think it makes life a little bit easier when you're working in a doorway if you have uh, if you have a cut here, if you have a, a, um, a splice, um, not a splice, but a joint inside the door jam, just so you can kind of wiggle things around a little bit. Um, it's not really necessary, actually, if you, it kind of depends on the application, actually. Here, um, I really couldn't do it with one piece because I would have had only a couple inches left on that side, so it kind of forced me to, but depending on the situation, it's nice to have a little bit of flexibility to, you know, to move that. Uh, within that doorway. So the first thing that you want to do um, is sure the best angle for you to see this, but the first thing that you want to do is you want to take the so on your on your lamin <clears throat> laminate product there's always a male and a female side so and you always lay you always lay it this way so the female side is toward you and the male side goes in and clicks down. That's how those floor, the flooring always goes together. But in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to slide this piece of flooring underneath this, uh, this door jam. So if you just try to do it with the existing flooring with, with the snap lock lips in place, when you slide this in, you're not going to be able to get it in there because you're going to hit that lip and it's going to be stuck there. So what you need to do is take that, take the, um, take your plane or utility knife, and just take that edge of that, uh, of that female strip off of there, um, and that's going to allow us to actually slip that in there and, um, and not have interference. So there, and then also because I have a joint here, um, this piece is going to go in first, and then this piece will go in. I won't be able to snap into this, so I'm also going to take the um, take the lip off of this side as well. So again, you know, if you just take your block plane, I'll wait and see this on camera. The plane works really good. Just run right down there. And it peels it right off. 
You get a nice flat. You take a hair more off of there. And if you can see that, that lip is gone. So I'll actually be able to slide a piece in there. So the key to doing this is you need to have glue. So since we're taking the snap mechanism off of here, the glue is what's going to uh, basically hold this together. And it'll be just as strong, possibly even stronger than it would have been um, if you would have snapped it because the glue will set up and it'll basically make this like one, uh, one solid board. Um, so I guess I have it right here. Another thing is good to have some tape. You use this regular blue painter's tape. I like to use duct tape because it's a little bit stickier. Um, but the way this is going to go, I think I will go to the camera. Okay, so the approach here is, of course, I have both these pieces already cut to kind of fit, you know, fit perfectly underneath that door jam. But the approach is, we're going to take a little bit of glue, and we're just going to lay a real small bead of glue inside that joint over there. And I'm going to take this piece, and I've already test fit this and actually put a mark on the floor so I know where to line it up, because so I've got it going underneath the cabinet on this side. Um, and it'll be a little bit tight sometimes. So grab your tapping block. I like to use a simple plastic tapping block. It's cheap and it works well. I've got my mark lined up here so I know that left and right I'm positioned where I need to be. And just... squeeze through there if you have a wet rag you can pull that off real easy and then take a little bit of tape and just throw some tape on there and that tape kind of acts as a clamp basically and holds that in position until that glue sets up and then like I said once this glue is set you've got a you got a rock solid connection there so now I've got my second piece that I'm gonna put in here and I'll lay a little bit of glue in bottom glue a little bit of glue in that joint. So I'll take the second piece. And again, by taking those, by planing those down, it gives me the ability to slide that in there with very little resistance. Tap it in. doing so, you can see that we've got a nice finished look here. Again, this side will have cord around that will come around it right up to that door jam. It'll cap that off. Same thing on this side. There'll be a little bit of quarter jam there. Um, but otherwise, it's a nice finished look. You don't have to do any caulking or any, anything like that around those edges and uh, provides a nice finish. Now I can just keep rolling backwards into this bathroom. So, so that's one area that I think people are, are challenged with that I used to be challenged. I'll show you another kind of similar application here in a second where, um, where you can use the same technique. Okay, here's the other application where, uh, where this works really well. I've worked my way in the kitchen here, obviously, and I've worked my way into the cabinets, and I'm in these last couple of rows here. I'm going to have one full row and then one that's just going to be a couple inches. And trying to get these in here the conventional way to get them tapped in, as you can see, is not going to be very easy. Now, they actually make a, a pull bar um, that you can hook on there and you can actually tap backwards, and that would work good in this application for this second to the last row. Um, but I don't have one of those, so I'm going to show. I'm going to use that same technique uh, that we did uh, going underneath that doorway. So I've already already taken again my little block claim, and I've already planed off the uh, the lip off the female end here, just to kind of clean that up. I'm going to go ahead and plane off on the end of this board where the next piece is going to go into. So that's ready to slide right in, 
And same technique, we're just going to take some glue. It doesn't take very much, approximately the length of the board. It's always a little bit difficult working inside these tight spaces. And of course, I've got some trash in there. Try to get all your trash out. Make sure you have your your gap, whatever your manufacturer recommends, up against the cabinet over there. And as you can see, that just pops right in. So that one's in. Take my tape as a temporary clamp, which actually you probably wouldn't even have to do, but I can do that. And I'll go ahead and run down the length of the cabinet, and then when I get into this last little piece here, I'll do the exact same thing, and that one will just um, that one will just lay right in there. So. Uh, hopefully that's that's helpful. These are again these are places. The first time that I did a laminate floor, I just really struggled trying to figure out how to make sense of of this, and I knew there had to be an easier way. And once I figured this out, it makes these these floors much easier. So hopefully you found that helpful. If so, uh, do me a favor and like and subscribe, and uh, I'll keep coming to you with more uh, DIY uh, quick tips. So take care. See you. Bye.